I mean, that question about, sorry, Michael, whether Liverpool have turned a corner, what does this game say to you? No, not really, because I don't think it was a performance to say that. I think Liverpool right now, I said before the game, they've got to get to the World Cup and then sort themselves out. We are talking about one of the best teams in Europe who over the last three or four years, and they're nowhere near that. We saw that in the first half, we saw second half a lot better, but they're just playing in patches right now, and a better team would have punished them in the first half. So, no, I wouldn't get too carried away with it. It's a good position to be in through to the next round but in terms of getting after the World Cup Liverpool need to be a different team if they've got any idea of winning this competition Yeah, you, you talk um, a lot about Liverpool's midfield and how they set up and you're saying they've not been at the races but do you think Harvey Elliott is the one to take them forward especially after his long term injury as well well, there's no doubt he's a young player who has got something different than the other midfield players. He's the one who can maybe make a final pass, do something different or special with the ball. Okay. But in terms of being in there for you know from now to the end of the season, I still think Liverpool would need a little bit more if they're thinking of going on to win the Champions League. Um, let's take a look at the other game from this same group then, which was Napoli at home against Rangers. Napoli, perfect record in the Champions League. And that... Jürgen, you through to the knockout stages, a very satisfying result and a very satisfying, satisfying performance, particularly in the second half. Right? Yeah, from a specific moment, let me say we had a tough half an hour um, where Ajax made a lot of pressure and did really well and we needed to defend with a lot of passion in these moments and um, but that's fine it's an away game in the champions league that's what, what can happen and you have to get through these phases we had obviously our our chances as well and then we scored a goal which was absolutely exceptional and have after that uh, a situation which probably explains bobby Firmino <laughs> in a nutshell because so I, how he, he passed that ball. I think Darwin was surprised as well. But it was a great situation. We could have scored there two 0 before half time would have been great. But then second half he really had a good start, scored two wonderful goals and controlled the game from then on. The Nunez did make amends for it. It's a fantastic centre typical centre forwards finish. He was fighting off defenders. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a, it's a really good game. Really good game. In both directions. They've helped defending and was uh, really, really played with a big heart today and um, I like that a lot. And um, so hopefully <laughs> we took him off early enough. <laughs> <laughs> but what were you thinking in that first 20, 30 minutes there? There must have been anxious moments there. No, oh, it's that's work. Eh? So um, we obviously um, changed system again a little bit. We had to. Uh, we thought it makes sense that we, it's, um, it's rather diamond in a 4-3-3, three, three, so a bit closer with the thing. But it's, it is new um, then again for the boys. And, um, but we didn't want to have Darwin constantly on the wing. We wanted him more central. And that's why we, we set it up slightly differently. So, But it's normal then. And they're a good football team. They're full of confidence always. I mean, in may face Ajax is always the same, full of confidence because they win all the league games. And boom, they think, OK, come on, let's play football. And then you have just to, to adjust. And, and that's what we did. And fine kind of performance that lift everyone a reaction from the week yeah yeah no we don't have to talk about it all the time but it's 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 clear we are it, we are through the knockout stages so we and i never will take that for granted so it's a really big one and um yeah really helpful um as well for the club important for everybody important and of course it gives a lift but um um for tonight 100 percent we all feel great um exhausted about great and um now we have a few days time to prepare for leads well done thank you thank you very much you know, sometimes I think that we expect so much from these clubs that we forget what an achievement it is just to get out of the group stages of the Champions League. Look at the teams who've fallen by the wayside this season. It's not easy. It's difficult. I mean, they're in a tough group as well, by the way. Ajax, the history that they're steeped in in this competition, also with a really, really thriving um, and dynamic Napoli team as well. So it's a difficult group. Um, but they've got through with a game to spare, and that's always good. You can then rest some players as well. But like you said... Uh, Get to the Premier League at the weekend, it'll be a different story, different opposition, asking different questions of his team. And they've just got to find that rhythm and that consistency to gain momentum before the World Cup comes. Yeah. Home games are important for them. That's what they've got next. And that does make a difference, I think, for Liverpool at the moment, doesn't it? Yeah, especially with Van Dijk in the team. I think he's unbeaten at home at Anfield in God knows how many games now. So, yeah, at home, they're a fortress, aren't they? So, they're difficult to beat there. And uh, for, for Klopp, that's the type of games that he's going to want to come to get that consistency back and, and the fans, I think the fans really helped this Liverpool team. Yeah, well they'd love a home win in the league, wouldn't they? Um, but let's talk about a man up front today, Darwin Nunez. Just give us a, an idea of the striker's mindset when things don't go your way and what did you used to do if you were like him sitting in the dressing room at half-time thinking, 
How do I not score that chance? Well, oh, listen, you're asking the right man. I went through it. I was, you know, well documented drought when I first went to Liverpool. But um, what I will say is, in the he's in the best place in the world. You know, if he is struggling for a, maybe a lack of confidence at times, um, you know, the fans will always be behind him. Um, there's plenty of other fans that be so quick to turn on a striker that costs that amount of money. Um, you can see he's working hard. I think Klopp, you know. Wax lyrical about how how well how hard he worked for the team defensively and offensively. And the best thing about tonight was he missed a guilt edge chance. Let's be honest. Um, and then he bounced back and he scored a fantastic header. And um, he's obviously working hard for the team and he, he'll get his he'll get his rewards. Karachi, do you need your teammates in that in them situation? Do you need because you, you see your teammates giving you like a clap? You miss a chance, they're clapping. Come on, like giving him a GL. Do you, can that be taken as like? Not that they're laughing at you, but it's just like a token gesture, or do you need your teammates? You know what, I think, I think with him, I think everyone can see he's working hard. That was a similar th situation to me, like, you know, we just won the Champions League when I, when I signed. You know, could have signed anyone in the world, then all of a sudden I'm a striker and I haven't scored, at, you know, for ages. How many games? Ages. 18 games? It was 18, Rio, yeah, yeah thanks, for, thanks for bringing that up. <laughs> but you know what, any other club, I swear by this, any other club would have, you know, handed you out after five or six games, you know. Mm. Once generally tonight, because I think... We shouldn't dwell too much, although the miss was a glaring one. You know, that can happen, right? We're talking about that much between the goal and not a goal. But what about his general play, the way he links up with the rest of his teammates? What did you think of it? I think there was good and bad. I think there was moments where you're, you're scratching your head as to what, what, what was he thinking there. But then there's moments where you think... Do you know what one of the things that stands out for him? He, he's always trying to get in there, though. He's always working hard. His head never goes down. He's tenacious. He, he wants to graft. He wants to fight, which is a plus you definitely want on your side. I don't think he's, he's ever going to be the cleanest of strikers, um, but I think he's going to be an effective striker in the long run. I think he'll be an effective striker who scores goals in, at his football mm. club. Um, because I think, I think as a defender, I think he'd be one that's hard to play against. Because he'll ask you questions all games. He might not be one that's skill silky and might not be one that takes you into areas and embarrasses you with bits of skill, but it will make you go out there and go, I've had a hard day's work here. It's confidence. When, it, when I think once that comes, once he gets two or three goals on, on the trot and you know, gets himself into this side properly, I think he'll go on a good run of games, good run of goals, and I think it'll be a real success. Also, I think Erling Haaland has slightly changed the rules as well when it comes to new players arriving in the Premier League. We expect instant success now because that's what he's had, but he's a young player who's come from a different league, come to one of the biggest football clubs in the world with incredible expectation. But also, he's a work in progress at the age he's at, and that's why Jurgen Klopp went for him, because he wants to work with him and wants to improve him. Yeah, I mean, Haaland is a beast. You know, if we talk about him, I think they're completely different strikers right now in terms of where they're at. I think if you look at the way Haaland moves and his intelligence within the box, it's far better at this, at this stage of his career than, than uh, Nunes. But I think that... Certainly, his attitude to want to get in the box and do the right thing is there, I think, and you can work with that as a coach. I think if you've got that in you, um, that desire to want to get in the box and score goals, you can work with those little movements to try then link him with the, with the likes of Salah, with the likes of Firmino up front, and so when and Jota's back. So I think it's just finding a way of suiting his style of play. His attitude is correct. I think he's got a great attitude, both with and without the ball. But now it's just about working with him a little, a little bit because you saw at times there is he runs into the box, although getting there was just erratic and no really thought process in, in those movements inside the box. Yeah. Okay. Right, just a quick reminder that